What if you could go on a journey to see monuments and, and landscapes of over 30 countries? Where would you go? From Aztec temples to palaces of the Ottoman era, even windmills of Holland. Well, I'm at a place that has all that and more right here in Canberra. It's the spectacular Cockington Green. Stunning horticulture and gardening. There are miniature models that are just so incredible. And I might add, it's a bit of a gardener's paradise. Well, this is the original part of Cockington Green, modelled on a, a number of English villages, including the church and the bells are ringing <laughs> that was created back in 1979, of course, right through to those amazing international displays. You see, in gardening, the world is your oyster. Imagine accurately trimming the edges of this turf maze. There's 600 metres of it. There's 300 metres of fine lawn to be mown. That's twice around the Olympic running track. And the end result? <laughs> Just fantastic. Mark, I, I thought I'd catch you <laughs> G'day, working in the garden. How are you? Good, mate. How are you? I'm really well. Great to see you. It's wonderful to be back. I can't remember. Maybe it's 20 years since I was here with your mum and your dad. Can you just remind me and our, our viewers of the history of this amazing place? Yeah, well, it was started from a holiday that uh, mum and dad and my two sisters and myself had over in the UK back in the early 70s. And uh, we saw a model village over there. Right. And that inspired dad to, to build one over here. You're a horticulturist. You've continued your parents' involvement with that standard here. Keeping the, the trees in particular in scale is really critical and it's not easy to do. People's gardens are getting smaller, so we're able to locate and source small types of trees that, that can take pruning, for example, right. or they like to be limbed up to, to make them look like a, a real tree. So there's, there's quite a lot of challenge in horticulture around here. We're working on the annual flowers and giving that vibrancy that people really love to see. It just gives you that bright, cheerful start to the visit. Just let it go. Now, this is a new one. I've actually been to Buenos Aires in this street. Yes, yeah, Caminito Street. Yeah, Caminito Street. The music and the dance in this street and the colours. Yeah, well, they, they actually painted the buildings with uh, extra paint that they had left over from painting the ships and things. Yes, that's right, down on the wharves. Yeah, so that's how they ended up with such colourful buildings. And it's, uh, it was picked because of the tango was invented there. Even the people have been built by one of the people at the embassy. So really, here in Canberra? Yeah. Oh, that's a great connection. Does that happen a lot with the other buildings? You've got, you know, you got Argentina here, but you've got a lot of the others. There's here. always a big connection between us and the countries when we're building the buildings. Um, they, we, we actually get to know them really well and, and, and they really become invested in what we're doing and, and us with them. Now, this is the Slovakian Chateau. I, I love this one because the conifers there are all in scale, but some of them I realise you've had to prune to keep them into shape, but you've got little book leaf thuyas here. Yeah, the thuyas are a great staple for us because of their, they're really compact and they, they, they form a nice shape and, and we actually don't, we don't have to prune them or anything. This has got to be a lone pine. It's a lone pine. It's from the genetic material of the lone pine at the War Memorial. Right. And uh, yes, we've put it in here. It's got to be a bit bigger tree than we wanted it it's to be. Scale is now to the buildings. It's a bit <laughs> too big. So what are you going to do? Uh, we're going to leave that there and move the building. Oh, really? Yeah, it's because... It's a glorious tree. It's, it, I, I couldn't bring myself to remove a tree of such significance yes. um, to our, our culture and our history. Exactly. Well, Turkey and Anzac Day, it's all... And tulips, of course, the tulips, and, um, and Turkey's national flower. National flower. It's all wrapped there. Now, some parts of the garden, Mark, are, are full scale. It's when we get to showcase our, our horticultural skills, I suppose, when we go into a full, full scale landscape. Before they move into the into miniature the village. landscape, sort of. yeah. You're also a garden designer because look at the beautiful colour combinations 
of the violas and the bellas. It's that lovely soft pink and the, that beautiful sky blue. Yeah, we spend a lot of time on our garden and our plant selection uh, to try to get the annuals to complement each other, to not have too much of the same colour in the, in the same vista. Now, a friend of mine has got one of these. You don't see many of them around. It's a flowering peach with two different colours, the white and the pink and the stripes all on one. Yeah, they're, they're amazing and, and they look so beautiful and, and much photographed, these ones. Uh, it's only a young tree too, so it's only been in our garden for a couple of years. It's only gonna get better. This is Prunus versicolor? Yeah. Right. Yeah, this is a glorious thing. Have a look at this wattle. This is Acacia cordophilia from up on the central New South Wales coast. Normally quite a, a large shrub, but here they've got a variety that is called golden lace. Now it's weeping right down. That's about three metres. And it's a beautiful plant. It normally lives for around about oh, four, five, six, seven years. This one's much, much older than all of that. And what's the trick? Well, Mark was telling me they get inside there and they prune out all the dead wood. It gets the air in and encourages a whole lot of new growth. And of course, it's that new growth that produces these beautiful flowers. Iceland poppies, who would have thought? What a wonderful display. This variety is called Wonderland. They're tall, they're strong, they'll take a bit of a breeze and look at the range of beautiful pastel colours. But they've compounded the colour by adding these violas and pansies around the outside, which really enhances the colour of the poppies, gives it a three-dimensional sort of look. Really beautiful. And again, like the rest of the garden, top quality. Oh, by the way, the castle in the back is a Scottish castle, Bremer Castle. And Hutman, you wouldn't believe, but they're playing the bagpipes out the front. Ah, there's even a miniature football field. And the pansies aren't bad either. Oh, will you look at this? A traditional English village with the thatch cottages around the outside, the picket fence, and of course a game of cricket being played. The bowler's coming in. Oh, it's going to be the middle stump. He's out. Well, I tell you what, it's not the MCG or the SCG, but the lawn and the green is just perfect. And I'll give you some tips on how you can get your grass looking this good. You know, lawns every now and again need, especially in spring, just that little bit of aeration. And the garden fork is good enough. Give it a bit of a wriggle, and that opens up the air, and then you can get water and a bit of air in there, which really helps the grass. But of course, this lawn is looking pretty fantastic at the moment, but maybe your lawn looks like this. It's brown, half dead, weeds everywhere. In fact, very much unloved. Well, you need to give it some TLC, especially at this time of the year. And there's a great hose on, which is called Weed, Feed and Green Up. And it's really quick and it works an absolute treat. It's going to have your lawn looking fantastic. But if your lawn already looks like this, you need to keep it looking good. And that's when Extreme Green comes into play and it's a slow release. You just sprinkle it through, it gets watered into and some of it will fall into those little holes that you've made with your garden fork and then it'll start to green up and toughen up excludes the weeds because it's just so strong the grass and then you'll have a fantastic summer and the kids won't have any bindies and you'll have a beautiful lush green lawn surrounding your house give it a go Well, it's been the most fantastic visit. I really think it's one of the best gardens I've ever seen. But have you run out of room? Is there anything in the future? Look, there's always room. You know, in a garden, it's always a moving space. And uh, we'd love to build Australian domestic dwellings. Oh. From the first Australians all the way through to wow. current domestic housing. The next time you're in Canberra or thinking about coming in, don't forget to pop in and see Cockington Green and these beautiful gardens. Whether it's this spring or the next one, any season, the gardens always look fantastic.